What's up guys, we are back with another Bandai Tamashii Nations review, but we're going, we're going way back. We're going, what, seven, eight years back, I think. And this guy is definitely not new, but I really want to talk about him. I really want to play around with him on camera. We're taking a look at the Robot Spirits Gundam Wing Sandrock. So this is something I've been trying to get a hold of for a while at a decent price. My favorite all-time Gundam, so we're going to talk about him. He comes in kind of the older format packaging for this line, and he is not the anime style uh, figure. This is the older style where they are just an action figure. They aren't going for 100% anime accurate like they do with a lot of the subline stuff now. So you've got him there with the big robot spirit stripe down the front, product shot on the front, figure in a small window, and then the back of the package has a number of product shots showcasing how he can move, what he does, and all the stuff he comes with. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our Sandrock Gundam from Gundam Wing. My longtime favorite Gundam out of any show as far as actual Gundams go. This has always been my favorite. I've always had a strong attachment to this particular suit for whatever reason. And I've wanted this figure for a really long time. Uh, it is really old at this point. I think he came out in 2012. And it was just before I really knew anything about Robot Spirits. And after that long, it got really, really expensive, but I did manage to find a very good deal. So I finally got him in my collection. And of course, I want to talk about him, despite the fact that he is this old. And we'll kind of talk about whether I think he's worth his aftermarket price. So let's get in there, see what he can do. He does move surprisingly well. I don't have a large number of old Robot Spirits. This might be my oldest one, but he moves really nicely. I don't really have too many complaints except for one one kind of frustrating area. So you can move his head up, the neck does articulate as well, and he moves down, and then you've got tilt side to side and full rotation in there. Arms go out at the shoulder. You do have to kind of move the shoulder pad to, to make that happen, because the shoulder pad is articulated as well. He's also got a butterfly joint, which allows the shoulder to go out almost too far, really, but it does help with some dynamic range. You've got full rotation on the arms. You've got a bicep swivel. We've got double jointed elbows, so all the way. And then you've got a ball peg at the wrist for hinges and movement, side to side rotation. The shield on this side does kind of get in the way when you want to move that arm around, but it does rotate as well to kind of help with that. Where I expected him to be the most restrictive, and he is, is the torso. So he's got kind of a lean, really, is all it is. This The top piece affixes to the middle, and then he kind of leans in and out. It's not the greatest, but it's better than nothing and then you can rotate in there as well. Of course, he's kind of boxy, so you'll have to watch out with how you do it, and then he kind of tilts side to side. His booster on the back does articulate as well. Legs go out at the side pretty good. All of the skirt pieces will move to help him get out of the way. Legs kick pretty much all the way forward, and they kick back a little bit. You do have a thigh cut up in there. We've got double jointed knees, which, I mean, he's got big, chunky knees, but they do get uh, some good range in there. And then you've got uh, some hinge, down at the foot with toe articulation, you've got rocker, which is pretty good, honestly better than I expected, and then you've got some rotation in there as well. So it's pretty good range of motion despite the fact you've got the big skirt piece that sits over top of the foot. So for a figure that, honestly, I expected to be a little more limited, he does move around rather well. Where I think this figure truly excels, though, is, is the look. It just looks great, and it is very much representative of how he looks in the show. This, of course, is not one of the version anime subline figures, but he looks really good. There's, there's, not, there's not much I would really change about this figure. Honestly, one of the real reasons why I held off for so long about this guy was I knew as soon as I bought this figure, they would announce that they're going to redo the entire wing line in the anime subline. And despite the fact that I have him, I'd really welcome that anyway. So we've got... Just a great representation of the Sandrock here. I really dig the flared shoulder pads. I think that's one of my favorite aspects of this design and of this suit, and it works really well on this figure. Of course, they were able to get these big honking shoulders to move really well with those bicep uh, or butterfly joints, rather. I dig the backpack on this guy. It's, it's small and compact but it works really well on this figure. And then you've got just a great combination of blacks and grays and yellows. The color scheme has been something that I've always, always been a big fan of. If I have one complaint about the paint on this figure, is there a, there's a little bit of bleed through on the uh, kind of front vents here, but the rest of him just looks fantastic. There's not tons and tons of paint on him, which is kind of par for the course, but what's there except for that little splotch is, is definitely great. Got some metallic green on the chest and then the red accents really pop. Big fan of the shield for this figure. 
figure. And again, it is removable. You don't have to use it, but it's it's supposed to be on the figure at all times, really. And it's got that great kind of cobra motif. Sculpt is fantastic. Paint is really well done. And just the general sizing and proportions of this figure works really well. He is, of course, slightly smaller. It's not like a 112 scale figure or anything like that because, well, it's a Gundam, so they're in their own scale within this line for the most part. But I think he looks great at this size. It's a huge, it's a huge up upscale from my uh, from my mobile suit and action figure, which we'll do a comparison to that as well as a model kit here shortly, just to give you an idea of what he looks like with some other stuff. But I dig the kind of beefiness of the of the legs down here. I think it comes through really nicely. The skirt is really well done. It's a very colorful clashing piece with the blacks and the yellows and the reds and the whites. And then you've got that head sculpt, which is easily one of the crowning, no pun intended, uh, features of this figure with that particular type of V with the four wings on it, the fin that runs down the top of the head, and then the red beard. I think it looks great. The metallic green eyes pop on this figure as well. And again, there's really nothing that I would change about the aesthetics here. I think, I think they absolutely nailed it. And if anything, seeing this one in person finally makes me unfortunately want to get the rest of the wing team, which are in some cases even more prohibitively expensive than this guy. And then as far as comparisons go, we've got a couple different things. There aren't a ton of figures for the Sandrock out there. There's not a great backlog of them. This is, on the left, the Mobile Suits in Action figure. So this guy came out, I don't know, I want to say back when I was in high school, and I've had him in my collection for a very, very, very long time. And then this is the 2011... Uh, master grade kit, so it's not an action figure, it's a model kit, but you can get an idea of just how they size up. So the mobile suit in action is around four inches tall, and then the master grade is about a 10 inch tall figure. And of course, the robot spirits in the middle is in between. So you get an idea of how they scale if you're familiar with these lines, and then they're just entirely different. So as far as technicalities go, there's really not a great deal to compare to, but you can see what he looks like with some other sand rocks. Now, as far as accessories goes, this guy is pretty well stocked, and he comes with, well, he comes with some of arguably my favorite Gundam weapons, and I just love the designs of the Sandrock's melee weapons. So, to start with, we've got some extra hands, so you've got a set of gripping hands on him now, we have got a set of just standard fists, so nothing special there, just some fists. You've got a set of different gripping hands for different things, so ones work the gun and then ones work the heat shuttles, and then you've got a set of style pose hands, so just kind of splayed finger style pose hands. We've got his little submachine gun here, and it does have a moving part on it. You can actually uh, pull this part back and it'll kind of rest on his arm. He holds this in uh, the hands that are on him now, and then you've got the heat shuttle. So these are the big things that kind of change up his look and make him look incredibly menacing, really. So to start with, you can actually plug these into the backpack here. So these pop in. They've got little ports back here that you can just stick them in and they will hinge back and forth. So that's where they store. So you can keep his weapons on him at all time if he's not actually using them, which I'm always a big fan of. So these things are a kind of curved crescent style blade. So they're very Arabian in style because that's the thing for this particular mobile suit for this Gundam. And the, they look great. They've got a little metallic sheen to the actual blades and then just flat gray for the handles. These things can be plugged into the shield as well. So there is a way to sort of sort of change them up a little bit. You could take the backpack off, plug it into the shield, and then connect the heat shuttles onto those as well to give him a more forward-facing melee look in combination with the shield, just to add up a little bit of oomph because the shield is already not cool enough on its own, obviously. But then you've also got the kind of heat-engaged form of the heat shuttles where they grow and they become red. So these are even larger than the regular ones by quite a bit, actually. So you can see they are quite huge. They're almost as tall as the figure itself. Itself. Great translucent plastic on the blades here. And again, these are just some of my favorite designs when it comes to Gundam weaponry. I really dig these and they work so, so well in this in this line, in this particular release. They are among my favorite things when it comes to this particular Gundam and one of my favorite aspects of this entire release. So he does have a pretty solid array. He's certainly not as stacked as say a lot of the more recent Robot Spirits releases, but at the end of the day, he really comes with just about everything this particular version of the Sandrock needs. So overall, I'm pretty happy that I finally got to add this figure to my collection. I'd say that despite the fact that I have a huge, huge bias here just with the design, that this is a really solid figure. He moves really well for such an old toy. He has a great design and he comes with a really solid array of accessories. 
he's not necessarily going to stand up next to modern day robot spirits because they do have a lot of improvements and changes in the line. But for this figure, I think it's really solid. That said, is it worth the current US aftermarket prices? Uh, maybe not. He goes for around 100 bucks, and I didn't pay that. I refused to pay that. I went to the Japanese aftermarket and paid about $50 shipped for it. So I'd say for that price, go for it. 50 bucks, you're getting more than your money's worth, especially for a figure that's this old that is still in pretty high demand. And uh, I'm just happy to finally have him. If you're a Sandrock fan like I am, this is definitely one to get. There aren't really many figures to choose from, and this is definitely the best one there is until, and hopefully, they release an anime version figure uh, in the Robot Spirits line. So that's going to do it for this look at the Bandai Tamashi Nation's Robot Spirits Sandrock Gundam. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time. <laughs>